Hey, I'm Honor Janetsky from Awakened Motherhood, where we teach moms how to break free from anxiety and overwhelm and awaken to joy. Welcome to the channel. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast, which is called Three Reasons Kids Get Defiant, Why They Say No, Why They Refuse to Follow Your Directions, Why They Get Angry or Argue Back, or you may have one of those kids who just politely declines to respond. I talked to someone yesterday whose, whose kiddo says, no, thank you, very politely. Smart kid, trying not to make the parent angry. So if this is something that you struggle with or that your household struggles with, then I'm here today to dispel some of the mystery around this and really draw you into the truth of the situation and open your eyes to the, the top three most common reasons why parents really struggle in this area to get their kids to get on board, cooperate, follow through, complete tasks, um, all those things. Because some of the, the reasons why you think it might be happening are, you know, your kid is this, your kid is not that. Um, you don't have enough support. You don't have enough help. Uh, the other parent is messing up the kid. These are reasons that a lot of people attach to that are not helpful, that create more stress for you, that drive you into overwhelm, and that unfortunately push the child into low self-esteem, um, feeling unloved, not accepted, which creates, of course, a bigger cycle, a deeper pattern of defiance. And kids wind up with diagnoses like oppositional defiant disorder. If your kid has one of those, really tune in, listen, listen to this. Or if you're a mom who is afraid that she's damaging her kids um, by, by really like not knowing how to get their cooperation, then really stay tuned and listen for, for what things you might be able to identify are going on in your life. And then we'll talk about what you can do about it to change those. So welcome so much. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to dive in first with a quick description of how this shows up, how this pattern shows up when a kid is being defiant, what that means. So um, often we'll lab label a kid quickly. Adults will quickly label a child as defiant. And, um, and the, the, the truth of the situation is a much bigger story. But let's just first name defiance. Defiance is when your child is um, very uh, strong-willed or stuck in his or her ways, is um, not very cooperative, doesn't follow directions. You ask your kid to do something and they refuse. They shout no. They may have a tantrum or a meltdown. They may slam doors. They may roll their eyes. So it feels like disrespect often for parents. It feels like um, usually disrespect. <laughs> it also can feel like um, disconnect. It can feel completely frustrating and overwhelming. This is a big trigger for a lot of parents, understandably so. So when... With younger kids, it comes up around things like brushing teeth, getting them to put their shoes on. Those are small, minor things. Bigger things like, I really need you to clean up this um, this creation that you were, were making. I really need you to put your things away. I need you to take responsibility and take ownership for what's yours here or the space we share. Okay. So if you're having trouble getting your child to do that, listen closely to these three reasons. These are the most common reasons I see in my work, helping moms to eliminate these patterns and cycles in their families and in parenting. And we're gonna start with a number one. So stay tuned for all three. Number one is, and, and I want you guys to just really pull up your bootstraps for this one because I'm not, I'm not pulling any punches here. I'm just gonna, gonna say it straight and, um, and tell you, the way that I talk to my clients about it. The first one is you, 
If your children are pushing back, if they're arguing back, they're ignoring your directions, likely the biggest reason that that's happening is because you haven't yet earned their trust. And trust equals respect. Your children are not, or teens are not going to respect you unless they feel respected, valued, understood, connected with. So if your kids do not feel that you truly, authentically, genuinely respect them as whole human beings who have equal power and space and, uh, and brilliance and creativity and life purpose as you, then likely you're going to get some lower vibrational pushback, some disrespect back. I want you to think of your child as a mirror and really take, take the leap to look at what they're giving you and showing you as a cue to something you're putting off to them. It may look different. It may be in a different form, but the idea is the same. The energy is going to have the same quality to it. What about the way that I'm speaking to my child? I'm giving them requests is not really honoring them in their greatness. All right. That's challenge number one. Number two, the biggest reason uh, outside of your children feeling not respected, um, not valued by you as a whole individual person, and they're not here to serve you or please you or make you happy. They have their own journey. They have their own purpose. They belong to themselves. They belong to, to, uh, to their own inner, inner voice, inner being, to their own higher power, their creator, they aren't here to make us happy in short, but that's number one. Number two is, um, there is sometimes what I like to call a mismatch in, in, um, the relationship, a mismatch in the connection and in therapy terms, in, in, um, psychological terms, relationship, uh, work, this is called a lack of attunement. So some of you may know what that is. If you've, if you've done, um, if you've done some inner work, relationship work, but a lack of attunement can also be called a lack of connection. And it's one thing to respect your child. And you may have that down. You may see them as magnificent. I talk to moms every day who really do honor their children. They see them as fantastic beings. They're in love with who their kids are. They feel like it is such a blessing and privilege to be mom to these kids. However, there's a, there's something not lining up in the connection. This happens often with highly sensitive children, or if you're highly sensitive, this also can happen if your child is extremely strong-willed or not very much like you. And there's this kind of this, like, I don't know how to connect with this person because he or she is so different from me. So I see this a lot with, with the, the moms that I help and Here's what's underneath this layer. Again, I'm not going to pull any punches. Um, you just, just really listen without any judgment as you can. But what happens here is when we don't understand our kid or what they need, or it's not easy, they don't make it easy. Some kids make it easy. Some do not. If they're not making it easy, then often what happens is there is a spiraling into your own wounding from your own past, past trauma, mismatches in your parenting that you received from your, your parents, your family of origin. There's a spinning out in, in what for you was not the connection and support that you needed as a child. And I'm just calling that wounding, past wounding, um, parenting wounds, motherhood wounds. Okay. So here, here's the, here's the, the rub on that one. You'll notice that you're doing this. If you get really mad really quickly, you know, some people call that getting triggered. You'll notice that you are struggling to be present, that being present feels really hard, feels really challenging that when you try to slow down and connect with your children, that it feels awkward, it feels anxiety provoking, you get amped up or you space out and numb out and go somewhere else, you dissociate. This is where old wounding is coming up. 
Another place it comes up is when your child does say no or disconnects or is defiant or, um, you know, mommy, 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 wanting all of your attention more than you feel like you can give. What happens to you is you disconnect, you go inward, you withdraw, you shut down. You also may feel very frustrated very quickly under those circumstances. So you can kind of go to this place that's like this other place inside of you where you're playing out this dynamic that actually isn't even about your child. And that's what I call a trauma pattern. That's when, when you're in a motherhood trauma pattern, you're not really addressing your child's needs in the here and now present because you can't see them. You can't reach them. You can't get past yourself and your own wounding. This is so huge. This is the biggest of all three reasons. And it's, and it's the most common of all three reasons that I see that mothers suffer, that children suffer, and that relationships suffer and struggle to actually lock into each other and find that beautiful, uh, loving, joyful connection. So if you're missing that, then this might be a reason for you. And lastly, uh, it could be that you are lacking a belief in yourself. And I see this about a third of the time that moms come to me who struggle with anxiety for a long time. Again, you might have really big feelings yourself. You might feel very stuck in your own process, your own emotions, your past. Whatever the reason, there are, there are, there are struggles, there are challenges to you seeing yourself as a strong, steady presence, a loving authority for your children. And because that's not there, your children are making it up as they go along. They're in charge of themselves. They are, um, they are deciding that since you aren't creating that safety and stability for them, that they're just going to go create it for themselves. And so because there's no safe boundary, there's no stability, there's no, um, steady expectation that makes sense to them, that honors who they are, that is rooted in connection and anchored in love and acceptance, they need to create that for themselves. And that may have been your story too. You may have found that because no one gave you that, you really struggled to create your own structure or your own meaning, um, your own sense of safety. And when, when nobody did that for you, which is, you know, a lot of people, then as an adult, it can feel like a complete blank slate. Like you have no models, you have no, no one has taught you. Um, you are kind of clueless about how to step up and into and become this person who truly trusts herself, who's confident in her decisions, who doesn't spin and spiral in self-doubt or regret or second guessing, who wakes up in the morning and goes, I trust myself to make the decisions I need to today. I know what's best for my kids. I know what works for our family. I can do this. And to then be able to moment after moment, show up in that strong, expansive energy for your children so that the result is they trust too. They trust you. They follow you. They say, yes, I'm going to do the thing because they sense really smart kids they sense that you know what's best for them and that it's in their best interest to follow you because you mean business and because you got a handle on things and that gives kids their own confidence that shows them how to develop those skills of self-management self-responsibility taking care of their own stuff really being the owners of their their story and their lives so they can grow up and have independence and thrive so let me know as you're listening, what clicks with you, which of these might be going on for you. Just drop a one, a two, or a three. I'm going to recap them really quickly. Number one is you, you feel a, a disrespect in the relationship, meaning you haven't, you haven't somehow earned their trust. This might be a tough kid we're, we're talking about, and you need help and support to learn how to do that. Two is there's a mismatch, a lack of attunement or connection for one reason or another. It doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean the kid is bad. It just means that there is a problem that needs to be solved here. And three, 
you're, you're lacking confidence and belief in yourself. You're not knowing how to stand in the identity of strong, loving authority so that you are a steady presence for your kids so that they feel relaxed around you. They trust you. They follow you. They do what you're asking them to do. And, um, and there's a calm sense of safety there. That last one is a cornerstone piece of what I teach mothers how to do in my work with them in Awakened Motherhood, that until we get that piece, really nothing else will stick. Nothing else can go and grow beyond that until you get how to be that mom that your kids need. And a piece of that is creating your sense of stability, confidence, and belief in yourself. And, um, and there's a whole skill set and strategy and, um, and structure to that. And, um, and I, I, I want to just validate and affirm that it doesn't come with having a baby. It doesn't come with bringing a child into your life, that it's a skill set to learn. And, um, and it um, is something that with support, with um, proper structure, with a really clear process for learning these skills does happen for people. It does stick for people. You know, if, if you are wondering if this could be possible for you, what I do doesn't work for everybody. Um, that's for certain. But I work with women who are really hungry for being that best version of themselves so they can see their kids thrive because what they're doing isn't working. And, and we know that nothing changes until we decide it's going to change. So if that's something that you want to know more about, I I encourage you to definitely reach out and connect with me. Get on my calendar. There's so much value to a clarity call to just understand the problem that's going on for you. And then you have an opportunity to learn about um, what next, what what can happen for you and what, what this proven system can do for you. If you do choose to seek help, having a teacher and an expert in your life to get you across that gap from where you are to the other side of this being easy, having ease in motherhood um, is something I hear my clients talk about a lot. I mean, it's, it's just um, incredible when you can just put down that burden and not have to figure it out yourself and stay in the spiral and the, and the circles. So I encourage you to reach out if this is resonating for you. Um, please let me know in the comments. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear your questions. I'm really ready to be here supporting um, this community and um, and helping in whatever way I can. So absolutely tell me which problem, if any or all, come up for you and um, and what your experience has been with that, what has helped you, what um, what more you'd like to know about um, about how to shift any of this. And um, yeah, just happy to have a conversation with you about that. So thank you for being here and lots of love and look forward to talking more with you guys soon. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you would like to subscribe, be sure to hit that button below. And if you want to book a clarity call with me, which you absolutely should do, then click my calendar link below or go to www.honorjanetsky.com forward slash call to book your appointment now. See you next time.